the Easter season, all 50 days of it, is one of the most glorious times of the church year. For three weeks now, since April 9th, we've heard just about every post-resurrection story recounting Jesus' appearances to his followers, each one with a strong testimony and a strong emotion. Delight, fear, worry, wonder, and proclamation. He is truly risen. We hear of doubting Thomas, the wounds that remain with Jesus, a breakfast of fish and bread with the disciples, peace and spirit given to them as a gift. Mary Magdalene at the tomb, crying and beyond. We hear conversations about Jesus, and we hear conversations with Jesus. On the one hand, we need to hear and revisit the post-resurrection discovery stories because we need to remember and we need to celebrate the foundation of our faith, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And on the other hand, we might want to fast forward and hear about what happens next. We want to move on and see the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the real world, in our world. He rose, now what? So when we gather as a worshiping community in the church, we come and we hear the witness of the Acts of the Apostles in the first reading of Mass pretty much every Sunday all the way through the Easter season. And we hear about the Apostles' Acts, what they did do, how they acted, what happened. And we hear that all the way up to May 28th. All kind of activities going on, all kind of acts, all kind of things that they do. But the act that we will hear on May 28th is from the Acts of the Apostles. The book is not the Acts of the Apostles. It's an act of God. When his Pentecostal spirit descends on the Apostles, and that final act was just the beginning. That final act of the Spirit coming upon them changed everything. But on this third Sunday of Easter, we hear another post-resurrection story about the two disciples on the Emmaus Road, the evening of the first day of the week. Emmaus is a, an amazing story on different levels. We hear about the seven-mile road. We hear about the conversation and the stranger. We hear about the scriptures and the disciples' feeling of loss and hopelessness and the unbelievable story told by the women, the supper, the breaking and sharing of the bread, and Jesus. Those Emmaus disciples that we hear about might be us. Maybe we're just like those disciples. Maybe we're not like those disciples. Maybe we're not disciples at the end of the road when they sit down and break bread and see Jesus. We may be those disciples on another part of that road we may be at another place on the road. We may be on the confusing part of the road when they were in wonderment. We may be on the sad and hopeless part of the road when they were talking about Jesus and the loss of him. We may be on the amazing part of the story of the resurrection part of the road. And maybe we do recognize Jesus, but maybe we do not. Maybe not yet. Their life that day was a journey. So is ours. 
And we, like them, don't always recognize Jesus Christ, even when he's very close to us, because we're caught up in a lot of things just like them. We have a lot of things on our minds, preoccupations, worries, distractions, and not remember what he told us and how we might recognize him. We might, like these disciples, recognize him in the breaking of the bread. We might also recognize him, like he said, in the faces of the poor or the marginalized or the shunned or, the ju or those judged by societies. He said, when you see them, you see me. When you do for them, you do for me. But sometimes we fail to see him there. Even though the risen Christ came near to them and shared conversation and scripture with them, the two disciples still could not come to that place of recognition. The risen Jesus comes in unexpected ways and in unexpected places. And the Emmaus stranger hung in there with the disciples until they recognized him. First they sat down with him they took time with him, and then in the meal prayer, they recognized him, and then they knew, ah, he took bread in his hands, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to them. Oh, that's Jesus. Jesus did that. He's doing that. And recognition dawned on them. Those two disciples, after their experience of the risen Lord, in the dark of night walked back seven miles to Jerusalem. They walked back into the community of disciples gathered. They came out of the darkness to the community of light, the community that also experienced the good news of the resurrection of Jesus alive. And their response to recognize Jesus when they did was not, oh well. Their response was surprise and awe and excitement and wonder. We also come to the community of disciples. We come together, not in Jerusalem, we come to the community of disciples right here in West Brandywine to share that same good news because we know that Easter is a, about an amazing resurrection. And Easter is also about the continuing journey of discovery, what it means to follow and to recognize Jesus who comes into our lives in equally amazing ways, to walk with him, to discover him, and we come here to enliven our faith and respond to Jesus' message to love and serve one another. And this community where we come gives us so many opportunities to serve and to love and to see Jesus in the faces of one another, in the needs of the poor, in the ministries that we have, in the service that we give. And we are alive in the resurrection of Jesus Christ because we are alive in his spirit that he gave us as his gift. The sacrament of Eucharist, which we celebrate every single Sunday, is the continuation of the Emmaus story, the Emmaus gospel, because we know that we are nourished by Jesus at this table, the Lord's table, and we recognize Jesus here with us in the breaking of the bread. Eucharist, for us, is the table and place of our commitment to the Lord, of our encounter with Jesus Christ. This is our breaking of bread together, Eucharist. Now, I don't know about you, but again this year, I've received several invitations to children's first celebration of Eucharist. First Holy Communion. And that will happen in a lot of our parishes in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia over the next few weeks. In fact, at St. Peter here, we're going to celebrate First Eucharist on Saturday. 
And in all of those parishes, as well as this one, with masses celebrating First Holy Communion, including ours, those masses are going to be packed. There will be excitement, and there will be energy, and there will be anticipation, not only on our part, not only on the part of the second graders who receive their First Holy Communion, but on our part as well, on the part of their parents, on the part of their mom-moms and pop-pops and everybody else who gathers, because they are gathering around Jesus Christ once again, and they are witnessing the breaking of the bread and the presence of Jesus Christ in their lives. And I am so impressed and struck that the Most Holy Eucharist, the breaking of bread with Jesus, can still make people excited, that we have not lost the enthusiasm for Jesus Christ present in us, and we come to share that bread of life. We come to share the life of Jesus Christ right here. This is our Emmaus journey as well, and we have encountered Christ, but we are still on the way, because our children who receive First Eucharist during these days, do not receive the Eucharist, the sacrament alone. They are joined to their brothers and their sisters and their parents and godparents and grandparents and friends and neighbors. This is what the church calls the community of faith. All of us gathered from anywhere and everywhere who profess Jesus, who presents Jesus, our kids will live and grow and be nurtured in the love of God by all of us who are in their lives. We share that faith as little as we have or as lot as, as we have with them, and they grow and walk with Jesus on the Emmaus Road of discovery. That kind of enthusiasm is not just for First Holy Communion. That's not just for one weekend in our lives. Now, do you think it would be weird for us to have that kind of enthusiasm and anticipation and energy each and every Sunday when you get up and say, hey, we're going to the breaking of the bread. We're going to see Jesus. We're going to find Jesus. We're going to celebrate Jesus once again. Aren't we blessed to have that opportunity to come to Eucharist? every single Sunday. All of those early witnesses we hear about in the Easter Gospels testified that he is alive. Our challenge in West Brandywine is to open our hearts and our minds to find him in unexpected ways on our Emmaus journey and also to find him in the breaking of the bread.